All right, let's get to speak to parliamentarians. Uh, we have with us the Honorable Dr. Chris Barrio Musi. He's MP for Kinkizi East, uh, but he's also a minister. Good evening, Honorable. Good evening. Good evening, viewers. And uh, we have the red clad uh, Honorable Sebunju Nganda from uh, Kira. Good evening, Honorable. Chris is in black. Why didn't you say the same? Uh, yeah. you, yours, yours is uh, admissible. Honorable Barrio Musi, let me begin with you. Um, this, this report that was tabled, the majority report, had a couple of interesting things. One yes. of which was uh, the proposal by the committee yes. that government institutes the Constitution Review Commission. Mm. And I thought that's a very good thing. But we seem to be working backwards because the Constitution Review Commission would, among other things, go out there in the public, seek the views of Ugandans and say, look, do you want us to amend? Do you want us to touch or not to touch and all these different things? But you're saying, uh-uh, let's first amend, then we have a Constitution Review Commission. Right. We, we seem to be shooting first and aiming later, Honorable. Uh, no, I think their recommendation is to the effect that there are other areas in the Constitution which may require examination. So they are recommending that since the Majest Bill was limited, it only addressed the few provisions in the bill, in the Constitution, maybe a Constitutional Review Commission can look at other matters, which, are the, which is okay, and I uh, can assure you and the viewers that the government is in the process of appointing a Constitutional Review Commission, which will look at other matters, including those which were saved from the last Term. Are those matters more important, less important than these ones you're debating now? No, all the matters are important. So mm -hmm. then why don't we have, because you see at the end of the day, mm -hmm. the Constitution Review Commission would have it, a, a semblance of a scientific study. They get to meet people and then they can record. You MPs, when you go out there to consult at the end of the day, we're not too sure how many people Chris Bariomus conducted, how many said amend or don't amend and all those different things. There's no record. Do you have a record, Honorable? I do, I do, I do. Mm. You see, the Constitution is very clear through Chapter 18 how it can be amended, like the provisions which we are considering can be amended by two-thirds of members of parliament, whether we consult or not, by the way. And we have done consultations. The legal and the parliamentary committee has examined the proposals. They have interacted with the various stakeholders. Each one of us was facilitated to go to his or her own constituency. And we have the views of the people. So I know what the people in Chinchis East to represent want. And that will guide me in the voting when this matter comes to vote. So right. mm. it is also scientific enough to enable us to take a decision as a parliament. So there is nothing okay. which stops parliament mm. from taking a vote on this matter. Okay. Honorable Samuju, you are suspended today. Mm. And uh, of course, at the end of the day, you folks are a lot fewer. You are putting up a spirited fight. Do you feel like your efforts are futile? No, they are not. Of course, I, I have told the many of my colleagues in the NRM that this thing is not about us. It's about the country. This week I wrote an article in the Observer about a second Afro-Arab uh, summit in Saad, chaired by Gaddafi. And there was a photograph in Los Angeles Times of the Arab and African leaders standing on the front row of Gaddafi, Mubarak, Ben Ali, uh, Saleh of uh, Yemen, um, the one of Burkina Faso, leaders who came into power in the 1980s, and they all either have been removed the first fray, they have been exiled, they have been beaten, and you need to be picking lessons. And let me tell you, many of the NRM colleagues know that what they are doing is not right, but they must do it the same way you saw people in Zimbabwe, including Finance Minister Chombo, people who are intelligent, proposing that Mugabe at 94 must be a candidate in the next year's presidential elections in Zimbabwe. So we, 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 we because <coughs> the colleagues with whom we are in parliament, they don't want to listen to reasoning anymore. It's like a mob, you deal with the mob, they must do it. But we must continue mobilizing the public, mobilizing. You, you only hope that it will not go the Zimbabwe, will not go the Tunisia, Egypt, Libya way, but there are signs we may go there. So we don't, so what's go, your plan, we, don't you go in, we don't go in to win. We mm. go in to continue battling um, like other people have battled. I think Gaddafi didn't know that he would go the time he did. So we may not uh, win tomorrow. We may not win on, on, on Wednesday. But certainly at one stage we will win. Our hope is that uh, all these proposals, uh, Chris and, and his president, do not go down with our country. That's, that's our hope. Honorable Bonomo, see, I'm, I'm looking at a survey that was done, a scientific survey that was done by civil society organizations. They crisscrossed the country and they got views of people and they were able to put them on record. And uh, from your constituency, 
93% of the people that uh, were interacted with by these people said do not amend the constitution. 93%. And you're a scientist. You know about, you know, mm. surveys and, uh, you know, how many times they can be close to very correct or perfect for that mm. matter. So 93% of your people are saying do not amend, but you're telling us that the people... I don't know which ones are saying I mean. So who exactly are you representing? Well, views? Uh, <laughs> I am a scientist that I can tell you that study is bogus. Mm. Tell me about that. In the sense that, the first of all, in research, when you go to conduct research, mm. you must be independent-minded. But this is a study which was done by people who had publicly given mm. their position over this matter. So they went to the field with a biased mind. Secondly, you just ask one question. Do you support the age limit? I looked at the analysis. First of all, the sample size is very small to reflect the position of Ugandans, but also you know, you're a doctor. If, yes. if if I want to test for if you want to test for whether I have malaria, you mm. don't remove all the blood from my body. You just get a little blood, and you're able to tell whether I've got but malaria. Not so. But and, and but, but yeah. you're talking about you want to remove all the blood. But I don't remove blood. blood. But so I don't remove blood blood over it's a sample of three thousand people. That, that's the Which and these were fifty thousand. Yeah. No. That's, that's for a population somebody. of 40 million? Yes, it's just 3,000, wherever it is done. No, no, no. I have taught research methods at the higher level of learning. I know what I'm talking about. That the sample size was inadequate, the methodology was weak. I looked at the question which they asked. They are not telling us, did you interview people of which age range? You interviewed the people by what residence, rural or urban? You need that differentiation for you to look at what you are interviewing. So this was just a bias study which was done, calculated to intimidate members of parliament. I can speak authoritatively that it is incorrect to say in Kanungu 90% of the people are against this. Actually, anybody will laugh at you to say that 85% of Ugandans are against it. Do you think we are stupid as members of parliament because we are able to pass this vote? We no, we think you're pushing yes. for your own interest. You're no, no, certainly no, no. not stupid. So do you think we are so silly that we can take it as a decision which is against it? the will of majority of Ugandans? Or do you think we as members of parliament do not know what Ugandans are saying? No, but, but that, that's see, actually a question that we are battling no. with. You see, so, let me tell you, yes. the NRM MPs met President M7 mm. before we went for consultation. Mm. Some of them mm. actually said that the public was against the removal of age limit. In fact, he said, you know, please don't go and consult the public. You Where go was consult that? At conference hall. No, you nobody, say, Chris. nobody said that. I he was told, he told you don't no. conduct public rallies, therefore don't That's ask not anybody. True. That's not so true. So what did he tell you, Chris? I mean, That's I, not true. I, I there was a discussion and people were saying, okay, we can consult leaders where you want, you can do rallies. There was a plethora of methodologies proposed. <laughs> yes, I was in that meeting. Yes, but if it was actually organized meetings, yes. you'd have a hundred in a hall and uh, these were specific invitees. Yes, and there's nothing wrong when you are picking the opinion of the people, like you said. But you if you select study. them, it's very like, much you selecting why are you people convincing who speak your language. Me? Why are you convincing me that 50,000 50, people mm. can speak for all Ugandans? And then you are saying if I pick leaders from selected communities, they can't give me the view of a community. No, 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 you see. Yes, the, the you don't have point, to go to every family the, the point, to get the view the of your people. Yes, yes. Many of the NRM MPs feared to conduct what should ordinarily be honest public consultations. They went for smaller meetings. You saw some of them distributing money, others distributing food, others dancing holes, others even hiding. So that, that's what happened, Chris. It may not have happened in your constituency, no. but we must be honest about ourselves. In fact, for us, who went for public <laughs> meetings, police issued a note that you can't go and hold the joint rallies. When I went to Wewe, they said you can't uh, conduct a rally here, you go to Chirinya. So this is what we went through. Uh, but but many of your colleagues, this NTV uh, here, mm -hmm. was broadcasting consultations of NRM MPs in a smaller room. Some of them hiding. Uh, and by the way, Chris, by the um, way technical also. Mm -hmm. A rally may not be the best way to get the opinion of the people in the community. But you're saying these ones, the sample was too small. So you mean a rally is a... So you can have a mixture of methodologies. No, no, I'm so just looking... Say because you call a huge rally, you put on red, red colors, then you think you have got no, the opinion. I, I am only not answering, I am only answering yes. you, Chris. Yes. You are dismissing this survey because the sampling was small. And I am telling you in your own meeting, you agreed that you want a small sample. So you can't fault mm -hmm. others when you're doing the same thing. Honorable Barrio um, yes. you are my friend, so you'll take this in good faith. Mm -hmm. And yes, I say yes. this as a citizen. Yes. As opposed to leaders, I seem to see us having dealers. And uh, in my opinion, it, it goes right from the president. The president is cutting out a deal for himself. Let's remove this age limit so that I can rule until I die. 
And on the other hand, you members of parliament seem to be cutting out a deal for yourselves. You're saying, look, if we push this for you, support us to extend the term of parliament from five to seven years. And you have said, I'm going to support that. And, and so I'm looking at these dealers, and as a citizen, I am worried that our leaders have turned into dealers. First of all, it's not President Museveni who moved this uh, He bill. supported it overwhelmingly. Yes, did he, he not? did, and the government supported it. And it's going to benefit and, uh, him. Because it is uh, not true. Mm. It is not true that once the bill has been passed, it's only President Yoweri Museveni who can offer himself for president. Anybody above 75 years, including General Moses Ali, when is the last time those folks expressed and interest? And many others. In your party, when people express interest in that seat, you know what happens to them. Can <laughs> express their interest. Mm. Even those who are below 35 years, 35 to 18, can express interest. So we're not saying that amending the constitution, the constitution automatically makes President Yoweri Museveni president forever. We shall be having elections. Yes, there is also the proposal of extending the life of parliament. But that does not necessarily mean that is benefiting the current members of parliament. Other members will stand after the expire of this term, they will <laughs> offer themselves. <laughs> and there are justifications uh -huh. for why there is a need to shift from five to seven for members of parliament, for local governments. So there is enough Because you time. need more time. So why then don't you make it 10, 20? Because if it's time, 20 years is a very good time. Wait for the debate. So wh why don't you push it? Instead of uh, seven years, say 20. Uh, because you see, 20, trend. we are going to save money that we spend on elections. You're going to have enough time to deliberate yes. and uh, fulfill the it pledges, 10, the promises. It be 15, but what is being proposed is seven. And I think there's a trend in most of the countries to shift from five years mm. to seven years. And for just five reasons, that five years appear to be few. Actually, when I was consulting in the Kanungu, someone told me, why don't you put your terms 10 years? We are tired of elections. And the argument is that five years, you come to parliament or the district council, the first two years are for learning. The third year, you start working. The fourth year, you go back for primary. That makes you lazy primary. leaders, honorable. Why should you spend two years without working for heaven's sake? We sent you to parliament to work. Yes, so if you're saying for two years, you're just learning. People are still I, I am at a loss. You heard how members of parliament were just the, all over the parliament. The rule, point of procedure, rule this when they don't appreciate even the rules. Okay, we've got to wrap this up. Honorable Samuju, what, what, what's your game plan now? <clears throat> As I said, this has nothing to do with us. We are fighting for the rest of Ugandans. If some of us have been suspended from parliament. We then go and mobilize the public. The good thing is that them, they have said they will be organizing small meetings. So it is to this public that will make an appeal because this has nothing to do with us as individuals. This has something to do with the country. Uh, and I have kept telling all the friends within the NRM that if Mr. M7 continues to manipulate the elections and he wins and he grows old like Mugabe, we will all pay the price. It is not me that who will pay a bigger price because I was the one making the loudest noise. We will pay the same price. So it is in our interest to provide for uh, orderly succession. The one that Museven wrote on more than 12 pages of his manifest. Orderly succession, orderly succession. They are saying, no, no, it is not important. Even when he speaks about the, the, the seven years, why do you extend the term of parliament for seven years and you want to be the first beneficiary? When do you extend for those who will come the next parliament? I told one of the NRM MPs who was telling me, don't worry, you're going to return term limits. I told him the capacity of the elite to conspire will not stop with you. You will have another group completely hopeless who will come and say, let us write a new constitution, and then they will put the term, the term of parliament to 10 years. So the moment you don't establish and entrench a culture, you open it up for everybody. Tomorrow you don't know what is going to happen. Okay. My time is up, I'm afraid. I'll give you 20 seconds. You seem to want to yes, say something. Yes, we also know where mm. the public is. Honorable Sabah, you should not hear Where is the public? We are all Ugandans. Mm. And we also represent Ugandans. So Honorable Sabah, you should not claim that it's only one who can reach out to the public. All of us shall be in the public and we shall no, be no. ready for, for LC elections. But you beat us. Right. Yes. And, um, Let us see when, whether when we go to meet the, the public, public you bring uh, police to beat us. The evaluation will be done through LC elections will be done in 2021 when we go for the general election. Okay, and when you go to the public, I hope that all of you will do what the public tells you. And the Honorable Chris Mariomusi and Honorable Sebu Gentlemen, thank you for talking to us this evening. All right, our news continues.